The decennial census has a resounding impact on the balance of equity in the United States, determining how communities benefit from federal resources for years to come. There are outside experts that estimate that $1.5 trillion every year is allocated by the federal government based on decennial statistics from the information that comes out of the census. It affects how much money individual communities get in a whole variety of programs, including, of course, health care programs. That was Kathleen M. Stiles, Chief Decennial Communications and Stakeholder Relations at the U.S. Census Bureau, talking about the far-reaching impact census data can have on the federal budget. I'm Todd Unger, and this is AMA Moving Medicine, a podcast from the American Medical Association. On today's episode, Dr. Aletha Maybank, Chief Health Equity Officer at the American Medical Association, sits down with Ms. Stiles to discuss how complete and accurate census data is a major step forward for equity and how physicians can help. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Aletha Maybank, Chief Health Equity Officer at the American Medical Association, and this is Moving Medicine. Today, I'm speaking with Kathleen Stiles from the U.S. Census Bureau. Thank you for joining us, Kathleen. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Happy to be here. Good, good. Thanks for for joining us. So I want to get right into this. I I feel um, while folks know that the census happens and it exists and it's potentially a very important um, opportunity for us as Americans to participate in, a lot of folks don't really understand the history of it where it came about, why it came about, um, and all, definitely, you know, why it's really helpful. So can you start with just telling us a little bit of the history of the census? I'd be delighted to do that. The um, census is actually called for in the Constitution. In Article One of the Constitution, um, it requires that a census be held every 10 years. Um, we call it a decennial census because it happens every 10 years. And uh, we have been taking a census in this country in every year ending in zero from 1790 to the current time. And um, we, we've taken the census in different ways uh, over the, the decades, over the centuries, starting with um, marshals on horseback who went from town to town and posted up registers with lists of people, um, moving to our current census, which we're in the middle of right now, which is we're taking largely on the Internet. Fantastic. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, And so what does the census tell us, you know, and help us do as a country and guide us in in, in terms of direction? The census is hugely impactful, hugely. Um, It affects political representation in this country. It affects federal funds distribution, and it affects decisions that are made by businesses and, I might add, healthcare providers all over the country. Um, The most um, important and um, the constitutional purpose of the census is to allocate the number of seats in Congress between the states. So after each census, um, there is a a reallocation, a reapportionment, and um, each state um, gets the number of uh, members of Congress that they're going to have for the next 10 years. The information is also used for redistricting, for drawing lines, for legislative districts within states. So it really is just a crucial part of political representation. But it's not just political representation. It's also very important for money. Um, There are outside experts that um, estimate that $1.5 trillion every year is allocated by the federal government based on decennial um, statistics from the information that comes out of the census. It affects how much money individual communities get in a whole variety of programs, including, of course, health care programs. Oh, that's, that's really helpful uh, and, and very interesting. And it really, to me, highlights um, that census is very much aligned with voting. You know, so there's the, the political engagement, but there's the civic engagement and how census is also you know, participating in the census is a form of civic engagement per se. That's absolutely critical um, to make sure that we're able to get equal distribution of and access to resources across the country. You mentioned a little bit so far about resources to healthcare and and funding, and and I definitely wanted to talk more explicitly about that. Um, and then I'm going to talk about it in another context. But I just, what else, you know, in terms of federal programs. Um, 
and, and resources to healthcare specifically does the census help us learn um, as well as help provide? Sure. So the decennial census provides and is the basis for the detailed population demographics that the Census Bureau puts out. Um, the data that we put out is, is really key in looking at social determinants of health, whether that's income, housing, or national origin. Um, we, not necessarily through the decennial census, but through some of our other surveys, put out key information about health insurance coverage, about public health, about hospitals, fertility, family demographics, persons with disabilities. Um, you know, we produce information that is really critical to the, the health care um, in this country. And so for us as physicians, um, what do you think is our value with the census? Because oftentimes folks don't connect those dots um, between, you know, one, the resources and the funding piece, especially if you're not involved in it. But also, I don't think for the most part, since it's not really part of our training, um, that doctors really think about how can they help support influencing patients to take the census as well as voting overall. Um, and so I just wanted to have a sense of, you know, what are the ways that you think doctors can be supportive of, of supporting patients in taking the census and completing the census, rather? So that's just a great question, because I think, um, you know, the Census Bureau does a lot of advertising, a lot of promotion, a lot of partnership efforts to try to get the word out about how important the census is and how important it is for local communities to respond. But in, in any survey I've ever seen about who it is that people trust, people trust their doctors. They are the trusted voices. And I think there is a real key role there in helping people understand the importance of responding to the census. It could be something as simple as, um, you know, taking some of the resources from our website and, um, you know, putting them on the, the website of, um, you know, your health practice or um, downloading and putting up posters or putting it in your billing statements. There's any number of ways that individual healthcare providers and organizations can decide to help support the census. That's great to know. You know, when I was in my previous role um, in New York City at the health department, we actually worked with physicians um, and a lot of activist physicians to um, put forward uh, prescriptions for voting. So, you know, just to kind of, it, and it was more of a messaging thing. It's not something, you know, somebody could literally take to a voting station, but as a way to kind of really amplify from the health lens um, for doctors um, and the importance of it to their patients, you know, they, they gave them these prescriptions and it was a prescription for voting. So it's something could be considered for the census as well as a way of um, communicating around this and galvanizing um, support and interest. And I think you're absolutely right. Um, it, it is meaningful to capitalize on the trust that patients have uh, for physicians. I, and by the way, I love the idea of the prescription to take the census. So all a physician would need to do is write on the prescription pad. Um, 2020census.gov, because you go right there, 2020census.gov, and you, you can take the census anywhere, anytime. There you go. So, great idea. You know, in talking just one other aspect of <clears throat> health and, and, and medicine, clinical research, how does, how does the data actually support clinical research? I think it's the same sort of inf information I was talking about before, because we have really, I think, the best data in the, the country about population and population statistics. And, you know, it's not clinical research, but, you know, every time I see a, um, a map um, about uh, COVID-19 and how it's, um, its effect on the United States and state by state, and I think they're using our data when they put that up. I mean, we are the official population statistics, and those are frequently key in health research. Kathleen, can you speak a little bit more on... Um how the census really helps us understand the social drivers of health uh, and how they help make us help us, especially in the public health side, make decisions around um, the social drivers of health that impact health? Yes, of course. Um, so the decennial census and the, the other surveys that um, are premised on the, the backbone of the decennial census those provide all of the key vital statistics about income, health insurance, and other measures of well-being. Um, it provides the basic demographic data uh, for the nation, along with many of the social determinants of health, such as income and housing and national origin. 
We also measure health insurance coverage. We measure rates of uninsured, rates of Medicare and Medicaid coverage. Um, and researchers in many fields use our data to help um, track issues ranging from disease to barriers to care to federal pro the success of various federal programs. Um, we also have data about fertility, family demographic, demographics, and about persons with demo, um, disabilities. And it helps us also with CHIP and SNAP and WIC programs as well? There are a number of federal programs that use uh, decennial census data. The, the Children's Health Insurance Program, CHIP uses it, Medicare, Medicaid, SNAP, WIC, um, community health centers, uh, reproductive health programs, um, child health block grants, um, social security block grants. There's any number of programs that use decennial census data, which is why it's so important that it be as accurate as possible. So it seems there is a role for um, physicians that are currently practicing, definitely even maybe there's a role for retired physicians to help support um, um, folks taking the census. We'd have to think about that. There could be a role for medical students uh, as well uh, to help support uh, taking census. You know, when you when we go out to give these messages, you know, how are we able to communicate that this is something that's doable and, and easy for folks to do? Taking the census is fast, it's easy, and it's important. Most users are finding that it takes under 10 minutes to respond to the census. It is a secure internet application. It has such great importance that we, we really do want everyone to go online and, and fill it out. Um, you can fill it out using the ID that came with your census invitation that uh, household should have received in the mail. And if you don't have that, don't worry. Fill it out without your ID. We'll still find you and we'll still count you in the census. Wonderful. Well, I have my uh, census uh, document envelope sitting on my table. I will absolutely be filling it out. But just to let you know that I have been sharing in many of my conversations as well as on social media, the importance of taking the census at this time, even during the time of COVID. So I really just wanna thank you um, for your time um, and for all the efforts that you're doing um, to get folks counted uh, and so that folks can have uh, equal resources and equitable resources across the country. And we're excited uh, as a physician organization to help support um, our patients, uh, ensuring that they get counted as well. So thank you. I appreciate that. And I love the fact that you're sharing on social media. Um, you know, people listen to their friends. And I think uh, social media and informal word of mouth, like you're, you're describing, is just great. So thank you. Kathleen, that was great information. We would love to have you back on the podcast. Would you mind doing that? It would be my pleasure. Thank you. That was part one of our two-part podcast series on the 2020 Census. I'm Todd Unger, and this is Moving Medicine, a podcast by the American Medical Association. For more information on responding to the 2020 Census, you can visit the official website at 2020census.gov.